Hey, thanks for visiting the channel. I was hoping to have another riding video out today, but Mother Nature had different plans in store for me. So I woke up this morning, looked out the window, and I was greeted with some really big fluffy snowflakes. So keep in mind that it's the middle of May here right now, so no one in the house is particularly happy about this weather, uh, including our Chihuahua, actually, especially our little Chihuahua. So I don't know why this surprises me every year, but it happens every year around this time. We get this big snowfall. So I think I must have some sort of like coping mechanism uh, built up that represses these memories deep in my, uh, deep in the back of my mind. So I kind of forget about it from year to year. So by the end of the day, the snow was melted. So it wasn't really a big deal, but it was still pretty chilly out. I think it got to about three degrees Celsius. So I've ridden, those, it, ridden in those types of temperatures, but I really didn't want to uh, head out onto the trails because with that amount of snow melting into the dirt, uh, they were gonna be pretty sloppy. So uh, our trail associations here, they don't want us to ride the trails when they're wet. So, you know, I'll just stay off until they're fully dry again. So I thought today I would instead talk about some gear that I've been using for the last couple of months. If you haven't been here before, I'm Hamant Naidu. Welcome, and please consider subscribing and supporting this channel. So I've been using the new Whoopstrap 3 for about two months now, and I think that's enough time to give me my first impressions. So this is the Whoopstrap here. Uh, just wear it on your wrist, nothing special about that. So if you don't know what the Whoopstrap is, it's a strap that you wear 24-7, uh, and it collects physiological data to give you a granular understanding about your body. So if you've ever taken a moment to go to the about section of my channel, you know that I'm in my middle ages and I'm just trying my best to stay fit and healthy. So I'm always keeping an eye out for things that might help me do this, make it a little bit easier for me. So having two young boys and a full-time job, you know, finding the time to keep active is pretty challenging. So yeah, anything that can help me uh, keep fit or just help me with that journey, you know, I'm gonna welcome it. So I first heard about the whoop strap from the mountain bike YouTuber, Brian Kennedy and his channel BKXC. So he is one of his sponsors and he talks about it quite regularly. And you know, every time he talks about it, I think it sounds pretty cool, but I didn't really give it too much thought at that point. But then uh, I was at the office and one of my colleagues, who's a pretty big road cyclist, he started talking about the whoop strap and he was talking about, you know, he was thinking about getting one. So at that point, after our discussion, I did uh, research a little bit more and I looked into it and I was really liking what I was reading. So, you know, something that really helped me make the decision was that this whoop strap, it's used by uh, professional athletes, you know, in all the major sports leagues, like, you know, including players in the NBA, the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball. So. I think LeBron James, you know, uses one as well. And, you know, it's not that I'm some sort of uh, prime athlete or anything like that. I'm far from it. But, you know, what it was putting me at ease by knowing that there were these professional athletes using, using it was that, okay, maybe this thing, what it's doing is not just a gimmick, right? Not like every th all these other uh, fitness, uh, fitness devices out there. So I ended up ordering one. And uh, the whoop strap, it focuses on three main areas. Uh, it monitors your sleep, uh, it measures your recovery, your body's recovery, and it measures and recommends the uh, strain level for you for a day, like how hard you should exercise. So me personally, I've always been a terrible sleeper. I wake up so many times during the night and I was pretty sure that this was part of the reason that you know I felt so wiped so many days during the week. And it was pretty hard on me. You know, I, with all this waking up in the middle of the night, I thought this was just the way people slept. I thought this was normal. And then, you know, as I started talking to more people about uh, my experiences in sleeping, I found out that actually this is abnormal and people typically, most people, I guess, that I've spoken to, they go to sleep at night and they don't wake up until their alarm goes off, you know, eight hours later or whatever in the morning. So I rarely have ever uh, had an experience like that. I can't even remember the last time that would have even happened to me where I just slept right through the night. So this is one reason that really was drawing me to the Whoop Strap 3. So the other thing, uh, recovery and strain had me really interested in as, as well. So over the last year, I've hurt my back uh, twice, causing uh, you know some stress on my sciatic nerve. So both times I was dealing with pain 
uh, on my lower back, and then it, which would run down my right leg, right down to my foot. So I was dealing with a numb foot for many, many months. And uh, this, you know, right now I'm actually still dealing with the second injury. I'm still recovering from that. This one happened in early January of this year. So the back pain's gone. I don't feel any pain in my back. That's, you know, fine. But the issue right now is I still have this nerve trauma which is uh, running down my right leg again, down to my foot. And this time though, it didn't happen the first time, but this time uh, I still have the numbness in my foot, but I now also have uh, quite a loss of strength in my, in my right foot. So just like popping up onto my tiptoe, uh, I couldn't do that for, you know, up until really recently, like maybe the last few weeks. I can get up a little bit now, but a, a major loss of strength there, slowly coming back, but it's a really brutally slow process and uh, you know, it's pretty annoying. So this got me thinking, is the whoop strap something that could have helped me with this? And I don't mean like, could it have helped me get healed or to recover from this injury? But what I mean is, could it help uh, prevent this from happening in the first place? So, you know, maybe on those days where I, where I ended up hurting myself uh, while weightlifting, both times it happened while I was uh, doing squats, uh, the whoop strap would have uh, maybe been reporting a low recovery, a low recovery for me for those days, and made a recommendation to you know have a low strain day. So you know it's impossible to know whether this would have been the case or not, but I couldn't help thinking that you know this might help with uh, the future and preventing future injury for me. These are the things that sold me on the strap. And I've been using it for two months, like I said at the beginning. Uh, so I think that's enough time for me to give some, some general thoughts on my experience so far. So overall, I think I'm enjoying it. I'm really liking it. I like what it's offering me. Uh, I really like the sleep tracking that it offers. It has a sleep coach, which is able to make recommendations to you uh, on how you should be sleeping, when you should go to bed, when you should be waking up. Uh, and it's, it's figuring this out just based on the data that it's been collecting, as well as you might have set some goals for yourself, fitness goals. Uh, maybe tomorrow I want to peak or maybe tomorrow I just want to take it easy. And based on that data that you give it and that it reads from your, uh, from the strap, it's able to uh, make some sleep recommendations to you. What I like most about the sleep data though is how it breaks down your night's sleep. So it doesn't just say you slept, you know, you fell asleep at this time and woke up at this time. It actually gives you a report of uh, different stages of sleep. So it'll say, this is how long you spent laying in the bed awake. Uh, this is how much time you were in a light sleep. This is how much time you were in REM state, and this is how much time you were in a deep, a deep sleep. So it also uh, measures the efficiency of your sleep and uh, how many disturbances you would have had throughout the night, like where you're getting woken up, maybe you get up to go to the bathroom, something like that. Uh, as well as it also uh, it measures your respiratory rate throughout the night as well. So uh, you know you it could be things like you your respiratory rate is 15 times per uh, minute. So it was not surprising to me, like when I was looking at my sleep data uh, for the last couple of months that I have a fair amount of disturbances and I spent most of my time in a really light sleep stage. So uh, my efficiency though was being reported higher than I would have expected. So, you know, maybe my sleeping habits are better than maybe I thought, but I'd really like to compare that data with, uh, you know, some friends or something that have the whoop strap as well, uh, just to see how my sleep patterns compare to theirs, just so I can get, uh, you know, kind of a, a baseline for myself. So the daily recovery is pretty great too. Uh, so it reports in a percentage that correlates to uh, low, medium, and high. So I've been using this extensively to plan my workouts and activities for the day. So there have definitely been days when I felt okay, like my body felt okay when I woke up and I would have done just a regular a workout or a hard workout. But then when I look at my recovery, it shows that uh, it's actually quite low or it's medium. So when I see that, it's like, oh, maybe I need to tone it down a little bit here today. And then knowing that I then don't do a hard workout, I won't, I won't do a hard row or go for a hard bike ride or something like that. I kind of think twice about what I had planned for the day. So I think I'm really hoping and I'd like to think that uh, doing this has prevented maybe some further injuries. You know, at least even if it wasn't gonna be an injury, it might've prevented uh, myself from putting unnecessary strain on my body when it wasn't really ready for that. Regarding strain, like WHOOP will recommend, like I said, a level of strain for the day based on your recovery and the other data that it's collecting. So the strain is measured on a scale of zero to 21 with zero being uh, no strain and then 21 being maximum strain. 
So at first, when it recommends a level of strain for a workout for you in a day, uh, it can be difficult to equate that to how much actual physical exertion it is. Uh, but as, it, as you do the activities, it'll tell you how much strain uh, that activity that you just did was. So over time, you eventually kind of you figure out how much of your this exertion that you're doing personally uh, relates to strain. So for instance, I know that a moderate steady row on my water rower results in about uh, 11 to 12 strain points. And then when I go for a hard mountain bike ride on my local trails, uh, I'm usually up around a 17 on the strain, uh, the strain scale. And then if I'm weightlifting, uh, it's usually around a seven. So the strap will also, uh, it auto detects uh, when you've done an activity. So if you go into the app, once you complete an activity, you'll, not you'll notice that there's this kind of pulsing heart icon. And you'll also see this message saying that an activity has been detected and the data is being analyzed so it can report on it. Uh, and then if you just leave it, it'll eventually finish its analysis and report to you the activity that you just completed. So you also have the option when you see that pulsing uh, heart icon, you can tap it and it'll let you process the data immediately and you can enter, uh, you know, this is when I started, this is when I ended my workout. And this is what I was doing early on in my time with the bootstrap. I was just noticing that it was analyzing my data and then I would just go manually enter it. And um, that seemed to work fine. But then, you know, I, I don't know if I just got lazy with it and just, and just let it do it itself. Uh, but that's what I did. I just, okay, I finished my workout and I just didn't even do anything. I just let it process and, and report the data by, or report the activity by itself. And what I found is that it did a, did a pretty good job actually of uh, accurately identifying my activity. So for the first few times uh, that you do an activity, when it, when it finds the activity or it detects the activity and it reports on it, it'll say, okay, what activity did you do? So you tell it what activity you actually did. And then, you know, as you do this more and more, I find that it, it can accurately detect your activity type as well uh, during those analysis phases. So when I go for a bike ride, it automatically records a bike, bike ride for me without me telling it that's what I just did. And when I do a row, likewise, it'll just report, we detected a row, here's your uh, analysis for that. So I think that's pretty cool. And then it cuts down on any, you know, time that you have to manually enter stuff into your phone, which is, which is great. I, you know, I really dislike having to do that. You know, I presume that when it's analyzing the data, it just looks for similar patterns in your physiological data during the activity uh, to compare it with previous activities. And then it's able to, you know, accurately assess what activity you just completed. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the app offers uh, strain coaches and sleep coaches, like I uh, mentioned earlier, and this can help you even more just kind of dialing in your sleep and the exertion of your activities. But I haven't made uh, a ton of use of those yet, but I do plan on getting into that more uh, as I spend more time with this strap. So I also wear an Apple Watch uh, over here. I wear one <laughs> Apple Watch on one hand and I wear the uh, Whoop strap on the other. So you may be asking how a Whoop strap is different. Uh, so they obviously both measure heart rate. And from what I understand, they, they both do a pretty good to excellent job of recording that. I've, I've actually uh, had both up at the same time to see how close they were in heart rate and they were they were pretty bang on. You know, every once in a while they get a little bit out of sync by you know two or three beats, but eventually they'd come back and, and be pretty accurate to each other. Where the whoop strap differs though, is that beyond just the uh, measuring your heart rate, it also measures something called heart rate variability uh, or HRV. So this is something I had never heard of before I started researching the whoop strap. Obviously, as we all know, a heart rate is just the number of times your heart beats in a minute. Uh, the HRV is a measurement based on the time between your heartbeats. So it's not just the average time between each of your heartbeats in a minute. It, it uses some formula to calculate your HRV. Mm -hmm. I read about it. And I read, there's a bunch of articles that Whoop makes available to you to uh, learn more about uh, the technology. So uh, that's what the Whoop Strop offers that the Apple Watch doesn't. With the uh, in terms of uh, fitness, so basically a higher fitness can be attributed to a lower resting heart rate and a higher HRV. So I believe with this data, Whoop is able to give you all of these analytics and make recommendations for you, you know, based on your heart rate, your respiratory rate, your uh, HRV, and all of that comes together to give you all these uh, cool analytics. So unlike the newer Apple Watches, the Whoop strap doesn't give you any medical warnings such as irregular heartbeats or palpitations or anything like that. I don't know, it seems like it's collecting all this data and it's doing a real-time monitoring of it. So it seems like it's something that it should be able to do. So uh, I don't know if that's in the plans for Whoop to add this in a firmware update or anything like that. 
but that is one difference uh, you know, between the two. So if you are relying on the Apple Watch uh, for these medical reasons where you're you know, hoping that it can detect some palpitations or a regular heartbeat, then you know, the bootstrap's not gonna do that for you. So I don't think either of these are gonna replace each other for me. I'm gonna use my Apple Watch as I've always used it. I don't think any of that's gonna change. Um, I always have worn a watch my entire life, so I like to actually have a watch on my wrist you know, to tell time. Uh, and I also use it for notifications, uh, you know, Twitter notifications, email notifications, text messaging, all that stuff. I, I use it mostly for notifications. Uh, the only fitness piece I use uh, with my Apple Watch is I use Strava for when I'm out for rides or runs, and I use that pretty extensively. Uh, so that's really the only fitness side of the Apple Watch I use. I don't pay any attention to the uh, Apple, uh, what is it, Apple Health app. I, I don't even open it. Yeah, the Apple Watch used it as I've been using it for the last whatever five years I've had one and then the uh, uh, the whoop strap yeah I'm going to use that for my most of my fitness data so the whoop strap gives you about five days of battery life which is pretty awesome uh, I wear mine 24 7 I the only time I don't wear it is when I'm showering so it is waterproof it's fully waterproof uh, but the strap itself is like a nylon or cloth or some sort of some sort of cloth so it does get wet and then it you know, it needs to dry. So I just didn't want to have to deal with, uh, you know, wearing it in the shower, getting it soap on it. I don't know how that'll affect it. And then having to let it dry for the next uh, couple hours. So I just take it off my shower. And I don't think that's a big deal to have it off for five minutes. Uh, it does not have a display and that hasn't been an issue for me at all. Uh, I assume this helps a lot with battery life and that's why you can get five days out of it. So one thing I really like about it is you can continue to wear it while it charges. So I remember reading about that in uh, the description of it before I had bought it and I didn't really get how it worked. Uh, but anyway, it comes with this uh, little charging device and uh, you keep this thing charged. So it's got a, a port on it here to, to charge with like a USB uh, charger. Uh, and then when this thing is charged, you can basically, all you gotta do is uh, slide it over your, your strap and then it sits there and then it starts to charge it basically pulls the charge from the uh, this device you just threw on your watch or on your strap. So I think that's pretty slick. Um, and it actually charges really quickly. Uh, so I think I've had the whoop strap down to like 2% or 1% and I throw this guy on it and it's charged up uh, within 30 minutes. And most of the time, like I forget I'm even wearing this extra piece on it and I just leave it on for hours forgetting that it's even there. But uh, it's uh, it charges really fast. So it's not like you have to wear it for five hours to get a charge or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it makes it bigger, obviously, but it's not enough to really notice it. Uh, like I said, I forget I, I even have it on there. I've slept with it one time, too. It was getting really low. I think it, it was down to 3% when I was going to bed, and uh, I wanted it to catch catch my sleep data. So I made I said, well, I guess I'll wear this thing uh, during the night. So I, th I threw this thing on the night. No big deal. It was fine. It didn't come off during the night, and it didn't you know, bother me with my sleeping or anything like that, having this little bit bulkier thing on there. But yeah, 30 minutes and you're good to go. So how much does the thing cost? So the strap itself is free, but once you order one, you're locked into a subscription model. And I'll be honest with you, it's pretty pricey. Uh, they have three options for you right now. So there's a six-month commitment that is costing you $30 per month. Uh, there's a 12-month commitment, which will uh, cost you $24 a month, and there's an 18-month commitment, which will cost you $18 a month. So the, obviously, the longer you commit, the, the cheaper it gets for you. So for me, I opted for the six-month membership, and that's the $30 a month one. So the reason I went with this one was because I didn't want to get locked into a longer term because I wasn't sure if I was going to like this thing, and I wasn't sure if I was going to use it to its full potential. Uh, so I just wanted to get in... Uh, you know, to the shortest term I possibly could. I figured I could live with a total of $180 over the six months uh, because, you know, if it didn't work out for me, uh, it wasn't too big a deal. And, you know, I figured this was probably quite a bit less uh, than what it would have actually cost to retail this thing if you were just able to buy the device itself. Like $180 seemed like an all right option for me to, to get into. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, after using this for another four months, uh, to give me the six month total, I think I'll be in a pretty good position to uh, make a decision on whether I'll continue with my membership or not. So I think this thing, you know, if it's priced outside of your comfort level, like it is pretty pricey. I think there's other options for you out there. Uh, you know, I, I know Strava, I use it, and uh, they have their premium membership, which is called Summit. 
and uh, it does give you similar type of insights into your fitness level. Like I think it does do recovery for you. It gives you a fitness level rating and stuff like that. It's based on your heart rate and your perceived exertion. So when you finish a workout, some sort of workout on Strava, you can fill in like what you perceived your exertion to be for that workout. So like basically low, medium, high and various uh, increments of that between those, between those three. So, you know, it's not going to be as accurate as actually having an HRV that the Whoopstrap has, but it does, you know, approximate some of this stuff for you. Another device I do have is the Stride Pod, the Stride Foot Pod. And, you know, it can do a similar st type of stuff. It can, it can calculate your recovery uh, and give you, you know, data re related to that. But this is, the Stride Pod is basically only for runners. It's used for runners and running. So you, you're not going to get it you know, if you're doing other activities like biking or working out or rowing or whatever, it's not going to be any use for that. And uh, that thing itself too is not very cheap. So I think the Stride foot pod is, when I bought it, it was like $200. Uh, but when I looked uh, today to see what it was costing, it was up to $325. And the only difference I could see was that they added uh, wind detection. So when you're running, it can detect whether you're running into the wind or running with the wind. So it can calculate your power based on that. So I don't know if that's worth an extra $125 or not, but that's what it costs right now. And then the, the Strava Summit, I think is $10 a month, uh, which is on par, I guess, with most fitness apps like that. They're premium models. And that's all Canadian dollars. So uh, if you're in the US, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper for you. With these other options, you know, they're not gonna be able to offer you anything in the line of sleep tracking. And I know my Apple Watch does offer that, but I've never actually used the sleep tracker on my Apple Watch for the main reason being I have to charge my Apple Watch at night because you typically get you know a day's worth of battery life out of your Apple Watch. So if the only time to charge it really if you want to wear it during the day is to charge it at night. So you can't use the sleep tracker, which kind of sucks. So yeah, using the whoop strap now for two months, you know, like I said, that's enough time to get a pretty good idea of it. I think I'm going to probably be uh, moving it to the 12-month subscription model uh, once my six months is up. I've been pretty happy with it so far, so I think uh, I'm going to continue to uh, use it for another 12 months. So is there anything I don't like about this thing? Not a lot. It's, uh, you know, there's not really a lot that I don't like about it, but if I had to pick and choose a few little things, uh, I think something I would say, which I kind of mentioned earlier, was just this nylon strap on this. If you do get it wet, if you do want to shower with it, it's going to take some time to dry. And, uh, you know, when you're showering, if you're going to get soap on it, I don't know how that's going to react with everything. So that's one thing I would have liked to have seen different. And also, you know, I was also thinking like if I'm out for a run or I'm doing some activity and I get really sweaty, this thing might soak up a lot of sweat. And I don't know how gross this thing's going to get after time of, you know, uh, <laughs> constantly soaking in sweat for months and months and months. So I think it is washable. So, I mean, you can wash it, but, you know, how many times am I going to wash my whoop strap? That's one thing I guess I would have liked to have seen different. Maybe like a rubber strap would be a nice thing or metal maybe. I don't know how that would work, but something different than the nylon would be a good option. Uh, maybe they have some things on their website, which I should look into. And then, yeah, that's really the only thing I don't like about it. And maybe the cost, I guess, it is pricey. So um, that's going to hold a lot of people back, I think. I decided to take the plunge and try it out, and I think it's been working for me. So I'm willing to eat that cost for what I think it's giving me. So that's my early impression of the Whoopstrap 3. Uh, I've only been using it for two months, but in that short amount of time, I think I've gotten smarter at exercising. And over the next four months, I hope to dive in a little deeper and start using some more of its features like the, the, uh, the strain coach and the sleep coach as well. And just uh, using the full potential of what the strap and the app can offer. So, you know, I think because of my leg slash back injury that I've been recovering from and that I'm still recovering from, I haven't really had a chance to push myself really hard when working out. I've been laying off a bit. I just don't want to re-injure or make it worse. So I think that's, you know, maybe a contributing factor to why I haven't fully dove into uh, everything this, uh, this device offers, just because I haven't been pushing myself enough that, uh, you know, it's rare that I get really high strain days. So um, I haven't had to really uh, focus in or dial in some of these uh, numbers using the strain coach. But I think as I start to recover and get better, I think I'm going to start pushing myself a little more and making more use of this, uh, of this, the strap and the app and getting everything that it offers. If you have any questions about the Whoopstrap 3 or you just want to share your experience that you've maybe had with one so far, 
please drop a message in the comment section and I'll be sure to reply. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit that like button. And now is also maybe a great time to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified whenever I post a new video. This is also a great and easy way for you to support the channel. So until next time, stay safe and take it easy.